Hello, my name is Joanna Gobriel. I'm a cardiology fellow at the University of Washington. And with us here is Dr. Reisman, a professor at the University of Washington in Seattle. Dr. Reisman, how are you? Fine, thank you. So I wanted to ask you, I am a fellow interested in interventions and structural heart disease specifically. What recommendation would you give me? Well, first of all, um, Structural heart disease is this area that's really just growing, and it's a f fantastic opportunity for fellows now. And I think one of the biggest challenges is that fellows are very uh, challenged by the fact that um, there aren't a lot of spots for them, and, and they, they, they're, they're trying to really figure out what are the best ways to uh, prepare themselves to get into the field. So at present, there's really only a couple of procedures that are commercialized. There's the mitral clip, and then there are the TAVARs. And for those types of procedures, a lot of the senior doctors who are involved in them are actually interested in doing themselves, and a lot of them don't even have a lot of experience. So what happens really is that uh, the fellows sort of are taking further and further backseat to that, yeah. and that, that's really a problem. So here are my suggestions, if I was a fellow, okay? First things I would do is learn everything around the procedure, everything. I would become an expert in CT imaging, I would become an expert in echocardiography, 3D echocardiography, and also I'd really, um, as one of my passions, get a really good handle about the anatomy and spend some time in the surgical OR, and I would spend some time online or even coming to Seattle and joining us and, and learning, about the, uh, spe learning about the relational anatomy using cadaveric specimens. So that, that is the approach I would take. The second thing I would do is I would spend a lot of time with my EP friends. I would make a good friend of an electrophysiologist. And the reason is because then you can get a lot of experience doing transeptals. And that's really, really important as, as, a, uh, as a structural heart um, person. And then finally, if the opportunity avails yourself to um, participate in some adult congenital work, because that's really important as well, because then you get a sense of the PFOs, the ASD, and a lot of the complexity of, uh, of adult congenital. And, as we know from where we work, if, if you can do adult congenital, then you probably can handle the majority of structural heart. So there really are a lot of opportunities. And then my final point would be is find something you're really passionate about, whether it's the mitral valve or the aortic valve or it's PFOs or it's uh, data collection, but something that really, when you wake up in the morning, you're excited about, and then really focus on that. And then Try to drive that as hard as you can, either through publications or through relations or, or with industry contacts. And I think if you take those series of um, suggestions, I think you'll have a very, a very significant opportunity to pursue a career in structural heart disease. Thank you. Thank you. And if you guys want any more information, go to www.youtube.com slash fits on the go.